We're back for more gaming stories with your boy. And today we're looking at how EA killed one of the most successful Need for Speed related development people's black box games. They don't really need any introduction if you want me to be honest, but I'm gonna do it anyway just in case you haven't heard of them. Black Box made some of the best Need for Speed games ever. I've actually got some of them here, which I, because I'm a real fan. I'm a real gamer, I'm a real fan. Oh my God, I didn't realize the disc was still in here. Bro, look at the fucking state of this case. Case, and then I've got a CD key because I lost the original manual, how crazy. It's crazy to think if you think about it. Underground 2, Most Wanted, were developed made shipped all in the same time that Need for Speed took to develop and ship. Isn't that crazy? As well as making some of the best Need for Speed games ever, they also did the Skate franchise. Believe it or not, Black Box were the ones that started the customization trend that we know now. Before Black Box, there wasn't a game that allowed you to change individual bumpers and stuff in the way it did. Steve Jobs didn't create the phone, but he created the iPhone. Black Box didn't create racing games. But they did create Need for Speed Underground 1. I hopefully you can see the correlation there and I'm not just speaking. Grease! <laughs> also stories, regardless of what you think about Need for Speed stories, Black Box started them and they're still happening today in 2020. YTG, you already know what it is. But they weren't perfect, unfortunately, because if they were perfect, they wouldn't have closed. After the mid-2000s, all of their games struggled to hit a chord with the Need for Speed fan base, critically, commercially. And in April of 2013, they were closed by the Lords <laughs> over at EA. But why? Was it EA bad? Did they just not meet expectations? Why did EA kill the one studio that made Need for Speed a multi-global national name? Well, I've got the answers and it's actually all on my laptop. So let's go. The year is 2011. Black Box hasn't put out a successful Need for Speed game, critically or commercially, since Need for Speed Carbo. Criterion, the year before, released one of the most critically acclaimed Need for Speed games since Most Wanted 2005, Pop Shoot 2010, not to mention it sold like hotcakes. Black Box had been focusing on the Skate series up until 2010, which had been doing fantastically well, but they actually hadn't released a mainline Need for Speed game since 2008. Need for Speed World did come out a year prior to Need for Speed The Run, which just puts into perspective perspective how many games they were making. So look at this list of games that Black Box made from 2007 to 2011. I'll also put the ones that were assisted developed in here as well. Did you know that Black Box assisted developed part of Battlefield 3? I didn't know either. Rumours were rampant about Underground 3 at this point on online forums and stuff. I guess that makes sense when the original development studio, you know, isn't axed. With Need for Speed now being shared across multiple development studios, the pressure was really on for Black Box to make a stellar game. But Black Box did the very ballsy thing of creating a new Need for Speed IP. Sub IP? I don't know what you would call it. You'd call it a sub IP, wouldn't you? Need for Speed The Run. Hey, before we go any further, if you go on to enjoy the video, hit the like, hit the subscribe. God bless the Lord. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, watching that back did Ew. make me cringe. I think we look back at a lot of Need for Speed games quite fondly because of the shortcomings recent studios have had. But we really have to look at Need for Speed The Run from a perspective of a gamer from 2011. I want you to keep in mind that we'd had a long string of customized based racing games in the mid 2000s. People were burnt out of that at this point and wanted something a little bit fresh. One of the reasons why I think Hop Shoot 2010 did so well, series burnout was a real big thing at this point in Need for Speed's life. There were so many Need for Speed games that launched from 2008 to 2012. There was a lot of games. And I think when you think in this perspective, it's really not that hard to see why many people didn't like the run. The single player was one of the shortest in the series. The customization that Black Box is known for was stripped back. Frustrating AI and a larger focus on action over racing are a few things that the run just didn't nail. It's funny because that's also one of the things that we critique Ghost over now is the action over racing thing which I still think you know he doesn't do fantastically but that's a different story for a different day. For me looking back on Need for Speed The Run it's definitely in my top 10 favourite Need for Speed games of all time but just because it's my favourite like favourite does not equal best I just want to make that abundantly clear. 
people get really twisted on that and they're like just like oh i can't compute this in my head just because it's your favorite doesn't mean it's best likewise just because it's the best doesn't mean it has to be your favorite it's just how it works i can see where they messed up it's not hard to see where they messed up. This was also the first game to use Frostbite, which the developers openly said in interviews was a challenge. And to this day, even modern Need for Speed games haven't nailed it over the course of what, five different games? I think at this point, it's just more beneficial if they use a racing purpose engine Critical reception came back very average and sales were the same. So when EA compares Criterion's work to Black Box work, it kind of makes sense to why they were put in EA's crosshairs. As in April 2013, Black box were. I did, I did. I mean, the thing was, is Black Box uh, was doing, you know, yearly development cycles at the time, and then, you know, slightly mad studios came in and and did shift, and then Criterion did. Um, if I got my timeline right, Criterion did uh, Hot Pursuit, and then the run came out. So, um, you know, I thought that the team would have enough uh, development time to put together. You know, a good game, and and uh, I thought, you know, when we were playing it internally, it was uh, I had a lot of fun with it, especially in the online modes with the playlist setup. They were the way they were. So no, I mean, I I did not expect that, but uh, that's the way it happened. Although Black Box made some of the best Need for Speed games of all time, they also were part of their own demise. Would the situation have been different if they released Underground 3 instead of The Run? Or if we got an Undercover 2 without all the problems? Would fans have even been happy with Undercover 2? With the burnout of the mid-2000s Need for Speed game being released year after year after year? You've got to keep in mind at this time, people were really burned out of that style game. One of the key elements to Black Box's demise was the fact that they strayed further and further from the essence of what Need for Speed was as they got older and older and older. Need for Speed World also closed soon after, but thankfully their spirit is still being kept alive by Soapbox Race World and a few other Need for Speed World server running things, uh, which I've made videos on before and I'll link them in the description or in the card up top. As well as that, it's pretty obvious to see the inspiration that Ghost Games has taken with Black Box in the more modern entries of the Need for Speed franchise with the customization and the grippier handling model. We only have Black Box to thank. Not to mention developers are scattered all across the industry we're at Cody's at Playground at Criterion uh, and even some aren't working on racing games like some are working on the UFC titles they're still out there but just a little bit you know here there and everywhere and that's it I hope you guys enjoyed if you did hit the like subscribe I want to quickly shout out all my patrons thanks for keeping the channel alive specifically Rubesh Zoltan and Bryce thank you very much if you want to go check out the patreon down in the description I will see you guys in the next one you guys have been awesome stay safe and Peace. I will call you a day. Baby has your day, but today it ain't the same. Every other word is a huh, yeah, okay. Could it be the truth? Or at the credit with another lady. If you took it there, first of all, let me say, I am not the one to sit around and be.